In this video, we're going to see how we can access one session managed bean from another session managed bean, specifically beans that are instantiated with Apache Spring. A recap of our last video, we created some search rules where if we click a button from index.html, it will return either search or no results as a string. If it returns search, we navigate to results xhtml. If it returns no results, we navigate to no results.xhtml. And what we saw in our index page is that we could hard code the string right here in the action. Or we could do what we're doing here, which is access a managed bean called search plants and then access an, a method called execute on that managed bean. And the method called execute will return either no results or uh, search. The trick is that we hard coded it so that it's just returning no results or it's returning search or, or whatever. And we don't want it to return the same thing every time. The whole idea of calling a managed bean from a JSF is that it can do some logic and then it can return a string based on the outcome of that logic. So in other words, the managed bean itself, the one called search plants, is deciding where we're going to go next. It's not going to hard code a, a specific URL. It's just going to return this token, in this case, no results. And that token is going to follow the navigation rule here in our faces config. So let's go ahead and make this conditional. But a couple things first. Uh, I had originally a DTO called plantsearch.java. That was too confusing with search plants. So before this video, I've refactored that. It's now called plant.java. This is a, just a, a typical DTO, or if you prefer a POJO, a plain old Java object. It has one attribute called name, and then a getter and setter for that. We certainly can and will add more attributes over time. But nonetheless, uh, this is what we have so far. Now, if we take a look at our index HTML, we see that plant is a managed bean, and plant is going to contain whatever text the user enters into a text box. And I apologize, my, uh, it's going to be a text, bo text box like this. But a separate managed bean called search plants is going to be invoked when we click the submit button. And unlike a DTO, this is going to be a class that's going to do some kind of logic. Now the trick is we need to get this plant, uh, this plant object, into this view logic class. So how do we do that? With plain old JSF, we're going to use a uh, an annotation called manage property. But a footnote on that, that won't work in our current setup because in our setup, we're using Spring for dependency injection. Uh, that's an add-in, something that's a little different from the J2EE PDF that we're reading for this class, but I did that on purpose because Spring, frankly, is very common. It's something that you'll undoubtedly run into in the, in the real world quickly, and I wanted to get a little bit of experience with that. So uh, what we need to do now is we need to declare an attribute, and remember an attribute is a variable, but it's a special kind of variable. It is declared within a class, but not within a method, and that gives it scope inside of the entire class and all of its methods. So I'm going to say private, and then we're going to say plant because that's our data type, and then plant is going to be the variable. Uh, control shift O to organize imports, and now I am going to add an at inject uh, uh, annotation, and then I'm going to control shift O to import that inject, and what that's doing is that's telling Spring uh, to put a reference of our plant object into the search plants object. So that's going to tie these two things together. But we do need one more thing, and that is a getter and setter for plant. So I'm going to control one, and I'm going to say create getter and setter. We'll do it the easy way. All I really need is the setter, to be honest with you, but we'll go ahead and create both of them while we have it. Okay, so now with this inject annotation, that's going to tie together the two managed beans we have on index.html. The DTO that's going to collect all of the data that the user is going to enter, as that's typically what a DTO or a value object, a VO, that's typically the job of it to represent all the fields on a form. And also 
uh, the action class that's going to handle our view level logic. That inject annotation is tying these two things together. So we go back to search plants and now we can do some conditional logic. Now uh, we're going to kind of dummy this up. We're just going to prototype this out. Uh, but first we really should do a null check. So I should say if uh, plant is not null, it's always safe to do that. Okay, we'll say uh, then we'll say inside of that, well, I'll tell you what, let's make a complex if test. We'll make the else part down here. So the else part means that plant is null. Okay. Now we have to, now we have to do the if part. The if part's going to execute if plant is not null. And let me add just a dummy thing here. I'm going to say and plant dot get name. Whoops. Plant dot get name. Dot equals ignore case. Uh, important, remember in Java we don't use double equals to compare string contents. That will, that will compare uh, variables or essentially the place in memory. Uh, the, I'm sorry, it will compare the objects or the place in memory. But we don't use double equals to compare the contents of string. In this case we use the equals method or the equals ignore case. So I'm going to say equals ignore case red bud. Okay. And then I'm going to say return search okay so again a little dummy data but we're saying if the plant object is not null and the plant name in other words what the user has entered into this text field if the plant name is uh, equal to redbud then return search and if we look at our faces config that's going to take us to results xhtml otherwise if the plant is null it's going to stop right here and jump down to the else part. If the plant is not null and the plant name is not redbud, then it's also going to jump down here to no results. So let me save and compile and deploy. Uh, one other important thing, remember when I start my server, I'm going to click on the little bug. That will open it up in debug mode so I can step through one line at a time which is going to be really nice in this example. So I'm going to save, I'm going to build and deploy, which will take a few moments, so I'll pause the recording. Now the server is up and running, and we're at the home page. I'm going to type in Fuji, like a Fuji apple, and I'm going to hit submit. And it's a little off screen here, but you'll see at the bottom that my Eclipse is flashing because the breakpoint has stopped. This is one of the most important things to learn early on is comfort with the debugger. The more comfortable you are with the debugger, the more time you're going to save in the long run. So let's take a look. Uh, a green line is right here on line 23, and that means it's waiting for me to give it permission to execute this line. But while it's waiting for permission, I can take a look at the variables under the covers. And take a look at this. If I mouse over plant, you'll see that name equals Fuji which is exactly what I entered on this previous page. So we see that, sure enough, that inject has worked. It has tied these two uh, managed beans together. And now the plant is not null, so this part is going to evaluate to true. But for an AND test to evaluate to true, both the left and the right have to evaluate to true. And in this case, plant.getName.equals ignore case redbud will be false because it's Fuji. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the step over, which is the F6, and you're going to see that the green line is going to jump down to about 26 or 27. And there we go. We're on line 27. I'm going to hit play, and given our faces config, we're going to expect that no results is going to redirect us to the no results XHTML page. Let's confirm that. Play and back, and sure enough, sorry, no results found. Now let's try this again. But on the second try, let's go ahead and enter Redbud. One interesting note, notice that it still says Fuji here on the main page. That's because I did put this to session scope. I did put the, uh, I did put that plant bean to session scope. So that means it's going to be alive for the entire time I'm in this browser window. So let me change this to Redbud. And I'm going to hit submit. And once again, hang on one second. I'll lower the recording a bit so you can keep an eye on this uh, icon in my start menu. I'm going to hit submit and you'll see it flash orange. When it's flashing orange again, it means the debugger is waiting for me to give it further instruction. So I go back to the debugger. I mouse over plant 
And here you see plant, again, name equals redbud. That means both the test on the left of the ampersands and the test on the right are going to pass, and it should return search. I'll uh, step over, and where it is returning search, I hit play. Let's go back and look at the page. And sure enough, you see plant results for, this is our dummied up uh, results page. Again, not a whole lot of stuff just yet, but we have confirmed now uh, that we're able to invoke a managed bean, which is kind of like an action class or a view logic class. And it is able to access another managed bean, which is acting as a DTO or value object. And it's able to interrogate that DTO. And based on what is contained in that DTO, it's able to change navigation. So this gives us a good start. From here, we can explore more about uh, the business logic layer. And we can explore more about JSF as well and some of the uh, nice tools that we can use with JSF. We'll pick that up in the next video. I look forward to seeing you then.